And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. The occult has many pathways that lead the blind to mystery Babylon. However, what most don't understand is all of these pathways are interconnected. Whether it's witchcraft, voodoo, wicca, paganism, sorcery and drugs, spiritualism and necromancy, satanism and luciferianism, false religions in the new age movement, or Freemasonry and the Illuminati. Imagine if Mystery Babylon was an old wicked tree and all the branches represent the different areas of the occult that Satan operates through to blind the masses. The following video you're about to watch is part of an ongoing series that we will have, Lord willing, in between documentaries and other videos. All of the evidence that we present to you in this video is public already online. Therefore, we present this disclaimer on the screen. There are many videos online that expose witchcraft. But what we want to do in this series is expose the occult in the areas that go undetected, the places where the serpent goes unnoticed in the grass, satanic times that have been strategically blotted out of the pages of history. We will be exposing areas where Satan is operating the occult under the radar. This is a series that we call The Places Witches Hide. The home birth industry and the midwife witch. Now before we begin, let us have a healthy and mature balance by letting it be known that not every nurse and midwife is in the occult. Although they are greatly outnumbered by the children of the devil, there are those who truly love the Lord God and only want to help those in need. A good example of this would be in the book of Exodus chapter 1, where two midwives by the names of Shifra and Pua refused to obey the commands of Pharaoh to murder the Hebrew boys. Therefore, anyone watching this video you are expected to judge righteously using discernment and not just falsely accusing any midwife or nurse. Remember one thing, you will always know a tree by its fruit. Judy and I heard about each other I don't know if you heard about me or I heard about you, right. but it was a, a natural relationship because we're both private investigators. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles, she's uh, down in Long Beach, 
and uh, as any good investigator would do, uh, just to learn or hear about satanic cults isn't enough. You've got to jump into it and delve into it and develop sources and informants, which we both have done. I've been told by a woman who was born into the movement that, and was in it for more than 15 years, that there are several hundred satanic groups across the nation that practice human and animal sacrifice. In all walks of life, doctors, lawyers, airline pilots, educators. I have been told of one superintendent of schools who is a, who's pr a, a practicing Satanist. You could hear them singing through the wall. Guy, my, my husband Guy, said it was Dr. Shand, one of these people, playing a recorder. Now, how did he know it was Dr. Shand unless he was there with them? Um, they're very clever people. They planned everything right from the beginning. They probably made some sort of deal with Guy. They gave him success and he promised them our baby to use in their rituals. I know this sounds crazy, but I've, I've got books here. Look. There was another actor like him, Donald Baumgart, and they put a spell on him. They cast a spell on him and made him blind so that Guy could get his part. Look. Here. I had this friend, Edward Hutchins. Maybe you heard of him, a writer. He wrote stories for boys. Anyway, he was my good friend since I first came to New York. May I keep this? Yes, please. And look, anyway, once Mr. Hutchins came to visit me, came to visit me, it was the time I was having this pain, Doctor. I was suffering so... You can't imagine how much I was suffering. And they wouldn't help me. Nobody would. They were giving me a drink with tannis root in it. Also, witch's stuff, tannis root. Hutch came and immediately saw something was wrong. He, he knew about witches, you see. Suddenly, Guy rushed in with his makeup still on, which he never did. They probably called him to come home and steal one of Hutch's belongings, which he did, took his glove, and they put a spell on him, too. Put him in a coma. Three months later, he died. Now, maybe all of this is coincidence, but one thing is for sure, they have a coven and they want my baby. Certainly seems that way. What do you think Satan was divining into the minds of the people through the movie, Rosemary's Baby? Remember that Hollywood has been a divining rod in the hands of the dragon from the beginning of its empire. Through television, cartoons, music, TV shows, and video games, the god of this world has been blinding the minds of the people, corrupting them, by the power of sorcery, magic, and the occult. And the word of God tells us that this spiritual wickedness is in high places. As we go through this series of videos, scratching just the surface, trying to dig as deep down as we can to expose the roots of this old wicked tree of Babylon. So as today's topic is exposing the home birth industry and the midwife witch. We will microscopically examine how they come under the guise of wanting to help those in need during pregnancy and childbirth to push their agenda and introduce the occult to expecting mothers that are already under stress going through emotional and hormone changes, their bodies constantly aching in desperate need for comfort. But the Bible says my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Remember that witchcraft is all about having power over others. 
Can you think of an easier target than parents already going through stress and the mother going through these emotional and hormone changes? Very susceptible and impressionable to anything that is recommended to them that is told will help. So blindly, they start to get involved with the occult without even knowing it. Since the beginning of the worldwide lockdown at the command of the beast under the guise of an outbreak, the rise of home births have dramatically increased. Now we know exposing the modern medical industry would be obvious. Although we've done it in the past and we will do more in the future by the grace of God. When it comes to pregnancy, home births, the midwife industry far predates the modern medical field. There are many reasons why pregnant women choose to have a home birth and a midwife. Whether it's just to choose the natural route and avoid what seems to feel like a hospital corporation and more like a business. But for many, there is a spiritual reason why they choose a home birth and a midwife. There are many Christian families that are choosing to go this route. But sadly, Many are lukewarm and do not have the knowledge. As Paul the Apostle warned us, we are not ignorant of the devil's devices. For the Lord God told us in the book of Hosea that my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. So if you or somebody you know is pregnant and they're choosing to go the route of the midwife industry, and something just don't feel right, and the signs that I'm about to show you start to raise warning flags, there could be a chance that you have been the target of a midwife witch. So, sister, first off, we just want to say thank you so much because these type of things are hard to find online, strange enough. And especially this one topic referring to midwives, water birthing, and other things that I just want to ask you a few questions. And, of course, we appreciate your time. If you want to just kind of introduce yourself, um, what your background is, so that way people know uh, if you want to just introduce yourself and your background, we would really appreciate it. Okay. Um, my name is Julia. I was in the occult, I would say, for maybe 16 years of my life. Um, I studied everything from Greek, Egyptian, African, Hispanic, Asian mythology and practices, Norse mythology and practices. Um, <clears throat> so I have, I would say, a pretty in-depth background that I, I obviously didn't realize how in-depth until I met you from the ministry, my husband. Um, I did a lot of research when I was younger, when I was practicing, so I guess you would have called me an eclectic practitioner since I drew from so many paths. Um, I read pretty much every book I could get my hands on and made a lot of connections. So hopefully I can give you some insight or give you some good answers here. Hey, amen. And I just want to thank the Almighty God for saving you. Amen. I mean, mm -hmm. you're amen. an example of how powerful Jesus Christ is. 
that no matter, and for anybody listening, no matter how deep you have gone into the occult or even things you've done by accident, not realizing it, such as the topic we're about to get into, we just want you to know that Jesus Christ can save you and wash you clean from all of those things and make you a new creature. Amen. Yes. Amen. The battle so, uh, was very difficult. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a real war, clearly. You know, uh, it, the it devil was, is not happy. Go yeah, ahead. I can just give you a little bit really quick. Um, when I first just started to even like try and read the Bible I just woke up one day and I was just like I need to go grab a Bible I don't know out of nowhere and I opened it I didn't couldn't read it it was like Chinese to me but the night terrors that I would get um I would get locked in wow. my dreams the attacks is they're crazy the nightmares that I would have like I I could describe to you the things that I would see or the creatures that I would see what would happen but I would get locked in my dreams, and the name of Jesus was the only thing that would get me out. And that's when I knew, okay, wow. something is up here. Yeah, just to give you a little bit. <laughs> no, but I appreciate that because it shows mm -hmm. that as you were drawing to the light of, of Christ, yes. the darkness, Satan tried to launch an all-out war against you, and really know, it right? backfired. Yeah, and it backfired in his face because... It only made you realize the power of the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're welcome. So I guess, uh, I, you know, you're busy. We don't want to keep you too long. I just have some very important questions. So this video is, is very important because it's, it's nothing. Like if you go online right now, there's no one really talking about this. I couldn't find not one video. Um, exposing this particular subject and what I want to talk about and I'll just kind of give you a, a couple uh, bullet points so you have an idea is midwives and how mm -hmm. there's a lot of witchcraft involved but under the guise of caring for the pregnant mothers right if you can if you can kind of go into a little bit of that I also want to ask you about uh, water birthing and this is something that I've always been against, but I couldn't put my hand on it. I, put, I couldn't put my finger on it, and God revealed it uh, to me the other night. And, it, and, and he led me on this journey to study the origins of it and what it really is. So if, if we could, um, could you just tell everyone listening about uh, midwiving? about midwives and, and what goes on with the occult and how they promote it, we, I'd appreciate that. Um, okay. I, well, I think while you were saying that, um, I think the reason why you probably are not finding a lot of it online is because it isn't advertised the way, like, you would have someone that reads cards or, you know, makes mojo bags for people, you know, how they would advertise themselves as a witch doctor or something like that, and people know, okay, we go to this specific person. I think it's more of um, kind of just integrated in the practice where you would have a high priestess or um, someone who is uh, well-practiced, involved in the birthing of a child or bringing a new life into the world. <clears throat> When I think about it, um, a lot of, I want to say, I'll refer to, like, Wiccans. Maybe not specifically them, but they have a wheel, you know, of the year um, where the goddess and god, false goddess, false god, are represented. And it is all about birth and rebirth. It goes with the seasons and all of that. So... It's not a surprise that they would also be involved in bringing a life into the world, you know. Um, also, we're held in the um, But I think that just kind of comes within, like, the normal practice. So they're not really advertising it as, oh, midwives are this or that. It's probably why you're not finding a lot of it. <clears throat> it's just kind of like, when they teach you or they train you, okay, this is how you set up an altar. This is how you 
you know, arrange your candles. This is how you bring a light into the world. This is how you celebrate um, spring, you know. This is how you celebrate, you know, the seasons of life. So that's probably yeah. why it's a little bit more shrouded than it is kind of out there. You Does know, it's sense? interesting. Absolutely. And, and what I found shocking is because you have to have spiritual <laughs> eyes. You have to be able to actually have discernment in Christ to spot what it really is. And it's shocking how many so-called pastors and what people will call, you know, Christian religious leaders, they really have terrible discernment and, and they lack spiritual authority to allow these things in their home. And, and what I mean is when I, would, when I was looking up these things, I started to realize that a lot of the midwives give code language and symbolism, right? Like they'll do like an Egyptian symbol in the midst of their company midwife logo. Or These are actual probably like Satanists, you know, that are trying to kind of mark the baby for uh, his use, you know, for Satan's use. Or maybe to be married wow. to him one day or something like that. Yeah, that's why when I um, I heard, overheard um, my husband speaking with you the other day about it, I looked at him and I was like, yeah, they're definitely in that. Because if you if you look, dig a little deeper into that darker side of it, a lot of midwives um, or a lot of Satanists are also midwives because they take those babies or they mark those babies as future wives, mostly girls, you know, or servants um, of Satan. They definitely want to be there at the beginning. That's, it's like, um, I mean, it's just like the world, you know, like everybody wants to train the child from the beginning to become something else in the end, right? So that's right. There's that, yeah. Though American pioneers would have denounced witchcraft, their lives were filled with practical magic. Planetary movements and superstitions guided their actions. Talismans and consecrated oils protected them. And herbal concoctions worthy of Macbeth's coven healed them. The article goes on to say, My own father did as farmers before him had done and employed a dowser to determine where to dig a well. These water witches use willow branches to twitch for favorable well digging spots. But some of the best known practitioners of the frontier folk magic were midwives, working as both nurses and doctors in the sparsely populated areas of the developing West. These women attended deaths as well as births, though some of the lay healers who preceded them in Europe and of the eastern seaboard had been targeted as witches, these frontier midwives were too essential to outlaw. Many brought folk wisdom from their countries of origin, traditions that had been passed down through generations Others gleaned contemporary advice from newspapers and traveling medical experts. Most invoked a higher power to work magic with humble remedies, though old world charms and hexes were also invoked. Traditions varied. Some believed that Tucking scissors under a mattress would ease labor pains or placing a rusty axe under the bed would diminish the pain after birth. Not all sharp instruments were welcome. However, some thought that if a pregnant woman laid eyes on a garden hoe, it would kill the child she was carrying. Anecdotes of visiting angels, either in the form of light or personages who assisted the midwives are common. Some of these mysterious visitors came to usher in life, others to take it away or to comfort those left behind. Magical powers were attributed 
to readily available herbs. Western midwives were particularly fond of Isabella, sagebrush, sunflower seeds, raspberry leaves, and thistles. These common plants were brewed up in teas, ground into or steeped in pots to soak infected limbs or immerse the entire body in a steam bath. What I'm going to do is show you a list of words on the screen that were mentioned in one of many articles you will find online when connecting the dots between midwives in witchcraft and the occult. Practical Magic Superstitions Talismans Herbal Concoctions Practitioners of Frontier Folk Magic Lay Healers Charms Hexes And now let's address the visiting angels who came in a form of light. The word of God says that Satan is transformed into an angel of light. These midwives who were operating out of the occult most certainly did not have the holy angels of the Most High God there to assist them. So clearly, these are what the Bible warns us about. Principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness of this world and spiritual wickedness in high places. Demonic entities and fallen angels that help those that are in the occult. No different than in the days of Genesis chapter 6 when the fallen angels came down. You can also find more information in the book of Enoch. But let us go ahead. I want you to watch this short video of a very wicked woman and I want you to connect the dots yourself. The tale of La Voisin is a dark one filled with plots and ploys to take down the enemies of her clients. She provided a variety of services, including poisoning, alleged sorcery, fortune telling and more. She even had an extensive network, but despite this, getting involved with members of the French court would lead to her demise. Catherine Dillé, known more famously as La Voisin, was born around the year 1640 in Paris. As a young girl, it's believed that little Catherine earned a few coins on the streets by telling the fortunes of anyone interested. She claimed that she had been taught the art of fortune telling at the age of nine, but it's unknown by whom. In any case, most of her predictions turned out to be true. This talent, which she considered God-given powers, would allow her to make a name for herself in Paris, but it later led her down a dark path. When Catherine was around 20 years old, she married Antoine Monvoisin. Her husband was a businessman who tried his luck as a silk merchant, as well as opening up a jewellery store in Paris, yet he had little success. Within a few years, Catherine became a well-known fortune teller, recognised for her accurate and useful predictions. Yet, she knew she could expand and earn more money if she could provide more services. So, she decided to acquire the necessary medical knowledge, allowing her to become a midwife. Allowing her to become a midwife. Allowing her to become a midwife. Although she did well for herself, Catherine, now known as Lavoisin, had to provide for her children, husband, and mother. In need of more money, she began to offer abortions within her midwife services to any women who wanted it. 
At the time, abortions were illegal, meaning those who facilitated it ran the risk of conviction and punishment. It was because of this that she earned more ridding women of unwanted babies than delivering newborns. It's believed that when La Voisin had to deal with fetuses who had been aborted late in the pregnancy, she would burn them in her house furnace and then bury the remains in her garden. She would burn them in her house furnace and then bury the remains in her garden. She would burn them in her house furnace and then bury the remains in her garden. As word of her services spread, women higher up the social ladder began to request her help. This in turn led to Lavoisin charging higher prices, thus earning more money. Eventually, she had so many clients that she even established a network of abortion providers, and her role as a midwife was simply a front for her illicit practice. And her role as a midwife was simply a front for her illicit practice. And her role as a midwife was simply a front for her illicit practice. And her role as a midwife was simply a front for her illicit practice. And her role as a midwife was simply a front for her illicit practice. Yeah, you'd be surprised how many people, you don't know who you're walking, you know, next to on the street, you'd be surprised how many people are involved in the occult, uh, even if they're dabbling, and how many people are actually Satanists or Satan worshippers, and how many are high-ranking, you know, or high priestesses or high priests. You don't know who you're walking, you know, next to. Um, but I did want to add that, like, the, the birth itself is a very powerful moment um, scene, I mean, not in just the occult, obviously, in just everyday life. Um, and I'm just going to add this note, and I promise that it'll make sense in a few seconds, but yeah. the birth itself is very powerful, just like sex magic is seen as very powerful. Um, they use that kind of energy that's kind of built up. Remember birthing, like the baby's coming through a portal, so it's like an opportunity to bring something else into the world as well. Wow. So if it's not wow. to mark someone as a servant, maybe to bring something into the flesh, you know, um, sometimes they are already there by, their, by the side of the mother while she's pregnant, throughout her pregnancy. Eat this, drink this tea, preparing her, not just at the birth, you know, they're there through the whole thing. Wow, can I, I don't, I'm trying not to interrupt you, but I'm like, I got so many questions and so many things to add yeah. in. You remember <laughs> okay. there was a movie in the world. Um, it was kind of along the lines of giving birth to the Antichrist. I think one was called Damien, there was another one. And basically, um, the, they had to groom, they, they groomed the, the, the mother to, mm -hmm. just like you said, drink certain potions, uh, have certain herbs. And it, you saying that just made me go way back and think of that movie. And I have a question mm -hmm. about that, right? So, mm -hmm. so I'm realizing now some of the red flags, and I would rather you answer for those listening, but some of the red flags that a midwife is operating either deliberately as a witch or unknowingly used by the occult thinking she's, you know, because if they don't know Christ, if they don't believe in the Almighty, they're not necessarily going to look at what they're doing as wrong, even though it's evil and God is completely against it, especially if somebody claims to be a follower of Christ, they should have nothing to do with any of this. So my question is, what are some red flags? that anybody listening that may be pregnant or one day will be pregnant by God's grace, what are some red flags that a midwife does, for example, offering certain herbs or certain chants? Or what are some red flags that you could tell people to watch out for? Um, I think you would hit it on the nail right there as far as offering them to ingest certain things. Like, my mom, when my mom was pregnant with my sister, um, her mother-in-law 
you know, just always wanted to uh, make sure that she ate well and stuff like that. And I think that's normal, you know, like your mother-in-law is there next to you. Hey, did you get your, 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 your fruits and vegetables today? Hey, did you eat your meals? Did you walk? You know, those are normal things. She's looking yeah. out for a pregnant woman. But I think if you see them um, gathering things and, and making you kind of want to drink something that they didn't really want to tell you what it is, unless the mother themselves requested the presence and knows that this midwife is involved and wants them around, you know, and is quote-unquote spiritual or whatever, I think we're excluding them out of this answer. Um, so for mothers that are not knowing maybe that, uh, that have a midwife, um, if they're trying to get you to ingest food um, or drink or anything like that, that they don't really want to tell you what's in it, um, or if they're very attentive, you know, to that, if they are trying to maybe teach you certain things, you know, don't do this because of some superstition or don't do that or you have to, you have to, you know, um, do whatever, take whatever action at whatever time, you know, when they're trying to kind of groom you in that direction, obviously that's not normal um, because that's not, that's not something that, that, you know, a normal family member would do, you know. Normal family member would just, you know, watch out for your diet, make sure you're exercising, you're getting good sleep, are you tired, don't lift that box, you know. Let us do it. You rest and stuff like that. But someone who is kind of like just on top of you, making sure that you're getting everything and just kind of steering you in a direction to think a certain way um, and do certain things, those might be red flags. They're very kind of good at hiding it. So I don't know that there would be too many other than your natural discernment as well. Um, now, can I ask you a question? And, so yeah. uh, from my experience, yeah, and and I don't mean to cut you off. I, I just had these okay. sessions, and so from my experience, when I my wife and I we minister to a lot of people, right? So we will get occasional women who have just given birth, or when we come across women that had like home pregnancies and things like this, and you know, it's starting to click that first off, is it known that midwives when they promote the new age, right? They'll they'll trick or let me say a better word they will cause the pregnant woman and the father i mean let's not exclude because the man is supposed to be the protector of his home and mm -hmm. in reality he needs to get dealt with first god is going to deal with him for allowing his wife to be deceived because in in my opinion in that moment his wife being pregnant a lot of times a lot of times they're going through emotional situations sometimes they're not thinking mm -hmm. straight right i mean they're you mm -hmm. know it's a big moment they're having changes in their body so he's actually supposed to step up and be a a, a greater watch men on the wall for her so when i think okay what would a midwife witch want to promote under the guise of looking like she wants to help right like the bible says that the devil comes disguised as an angel of light so i'm thinking a chance uh, new age, uh, uh, yoga, uh, herbs. Mm -hmm. Uh, new age, uh, uh, yoga, uh, herbs, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain drinks. Remember what our Lord God told us. You will always know a tree by its fruit. Your eyes are opening and you're starting to realize how those in the occult, whether in high places or low, whether it's in Hollywood movies, corporations, or regular websites selling herbs and salt. 
pay attention to the logos, the numbers they use, the symbols they have, the language in the way they word themselves can give them away. A good example of this would be on this ninth annual AABC Birth Institute website. It says herbs for childbearing. But as you scroll down and they're talking about midwifery, you'll notice they use the word wise women and try to make it look as if this simply means midwife. But I want you to hear this in the lexico. It says, a woman considered to be knowledgeable in matters such as herbal healing, magic charms, or other traditional lore, witches and shamans, wise women, and other variants of the same are more likely to have their own agendas. So this is occult coded language. This, when they're referring to wise women, they're referring to witches. In ancient times, midwifery and herbalism were woven together, being grounded and rooted in the earth with intuition, intelligence, and faith. Once again, coded language, letting you know they're into the occult, whether Wicca or witchcraft, and the list goes on. This is a perfect example of coded language. They go on to say, Wise women have gathered herbs for thousands of years by the wanning and waxing of the moon to prepare for birth. You understand? This is the coded language. If you watched the recent documentary we released called The Whole World is a Stage, it was very evident that the occult uses the moon in many of their rituals. On the next, as you scroll down this website, they go on to say wise women understood the rhythms of their bodies and the relationship to the magical gifts of herbs. You understand now? And then they get bold and say in spite of recurrent waves of repression and witch hunts for centuries, wise women have continued their traditions and legacy throughout time you see so it's quite obvious what is going on behind the scenes in the midwife industry but remember it is not the herbs that are evil it's not the moon that is evil the bible says that god created the heaven and earth and the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof a good example would be fire god created that in the hands of the righteous, it can be used to cook food, to boil water, and to keep people warm. But in the hands of the wicked, it can be used to burn a house down or even a human being. You have to understand, those walking down the pathway to Mystery Babylon use herbs and other things in their rituals. They harness the power for evil. That is the difference. And I hope you have a healthy understanding and a balance of what I'm trying to explain to you. So let us move forward in this documentary so your eyes will continue to open and you are aware of how the children of the devil operate, how they use symbols like pyramids in the all-seeing eye, they use Egyptology and certain things that people won't recognize unless they know about it or it is revealed to them. And this is why many stay blinded and spells and rituals are done on people because they lack the knowledge and they are ignorant of the devil's devices. This is why you must draw closer to the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. This is why you must study your word, because the closer you get to the Holy Spirit, the more discernment you will get, the more power and authority you will get to see the snakes in the grass and crush them with the heel of Christ.
what would a midwife witch want to promote under the guise of looking like she wants to help, right? Like the Bible says that the devil comes disguised as an angel of light. So I'm thinking chance, uh, new age, uh, uh, yoga, uh, herbs, mm -hmm. um, you know, certain drinks and brews. Like, for example, when I was doing my research, I noticed that there was something called the midwives brew. Mm -hmm. Now, that word brew to me, even though it doesn't necessarily have to link with which language, when I hear the word brew, that's a red flag to me. Because yeah, it's not a beer. <laughs> like, thank you. Like, no you know, uh, exactly. And, and you doing your research uh, for years, there's something called witch's brew, right? Like a potion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Guess Anything what? That <laughs> What's the active ingredient in this? <laughs> so you want to induce your labor and you need something that's going to be effective. Well, I have a recipe here for you today that induced not one, not two, but three of my children safely and easily. I'm going to share with you. It's the midwife's brew. Three hundred milliliters of apricot juice. Two tablespoons of almond butter. Two hundred fifty milliliters of lemon verbena tea. And two tablespoons of castor oil. Step one, you wanna to bring to a boil 500 milliliters of water. That's approximately the size of this water bottle. This is for us to make the lemon verbena tea, which is a very important ingredient in this recipe. As we go to a new level in this documentary, what I'm about to reveal to you is just another layer and a great example of how important it is that you have discernment in Christ. That you are not so quick in haste to join trends and just do things because others are doing it as well. All right, you guys, so I know I look a little rough right now, but I forgot to record me making it, but I'm trying the midwife's brew. I'm gonna drink this within what, 20 minutes or 30 minutes? I don't remember. But it's not that great. Oh my God. Remember that the word of God says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. You have to ask yourself, in the book of Galatians, when Paul writes to them in chapter three, how were they bewitched? I mean, it's obvious they were the church. So how did witchcraft have the power to manipulate and change their minds through sorcery to believe a lie? Now there's always going to be that handful of people that doubt and mock and just say, brother Wally is bugging. He's just reaching. He just wants a viral video. And I ain't mad at them because they are entitled to their opinion, even if it's utterly foolish. But for those who have eyes to see, when you start to see the patterns adding up, when you start to see corrupt fruit on the Babylonian tree, this is when you have to realize there is a diabolical agenda at hand. You just watched a video of the midwife brew. But as I was on this journey that I'm welcoming you to walk with me so you can learn and your eyes will be open and your understanding will be enlightened that you will be able to see how the devil operates so you can spot it, avoid it, and destroy it in the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Now remember, when it comes to sorcery, magic, and spells, potions, and alchemy, these are things that were taught by fallen angels. When mixing certain things together to get a demonic spiritual reaction, what would be the odds that the same ingredients 
that is promoted for this midwives brew are very important ingredients when it comes to magic in witchcraft. Let's go through them one by one so you can see from actual occult websites what they say about these four ingredients. Lemon verbena herb for hoodoo, wicca, and voodoo and is highly esteemed and potent when it comes to spells in the witch community. Almond butter. It is said that it adds a lot of power to a Wiccan spell. Apricot is known in the occult community. Although underrated, they say make spells much more powerful. And castor oil is very prominent in spells and particularly in how they deceive those who don't understand is by saying it wards off or repels negative energy. But remember, white magic, black magic are on the same demonic tree and you have to know this. You have many witches who say, well, I just use white magic, but Satan comes disguised as an angel of light. Even when you copy and paste the ingredients and instead of putting midwife brew, you put witch's brew and the same ingredients come up for the title, witch's brew. There are people that admit this, but yet those who lack understanding just carry on and do what they're told. And this is why the God of this world continues to blind the minds of the people. Saints of God, it goes deeper and deeper. So just imagine that the origin of this midwife's brew was founded on a witchcraft spell and a potion, but under the guise of caring for those going through pregnancy, they simply changed the word witch's brew to midwife's brew, gave a potion and imagine what it does to not only the mother, but the precious child within the womb. Do you remember what was said earlier on the phone call interview with an ex-witch, Sister Julia, who has over 16 years of experience when it comes to the occult? She said, when it comes to harnessing satanic power, childbearing, is as important as sex magic. Going on to describe that this is a portal. I mean, think about this logically. What could be more powerful than the moment a new life comes into this dimension, into this world? So I started to meditate on this and I truly believe that the witches and those in the occult masquerading as midwives are pushing this witch's brew disguised as a midwife's brew on unsuspecting pregnant victims that lack the knowledge and just simply do what they're told. And being that childbirth is one of the most powerful moments in the occult, what if they want to take over the authority and role that God has not only in that woman's life, but the precious child in the womb. Let me explain. Is it not the Lord God, Jesus Christ, who decides when a baby will come out of the womb? Does he not know the day and hour that he has chosen for a child to come through the womb and for that water to break? I truly believe that when women are induced and forced into labor, it is unclean and anyone that has had this done needs to repent. Think about this logically. What better way to take authority over that woman and child 
than to play the role as God in their life. By giving them this witchcraft potion, this spell, this midwife's brew, the occult realm through demonic entities will try to take the credit, will gain power by assuming the role of God in declaring when they want that child to come out of the womb and actually receive power because the mother obeyed the witch's command and the spell of the potion is what induced and caused that baby to come out faster they have determined this gives power to the fallen angels brothers and sisters this is very diabolical they want to play the role as God this is why they believe in gods and goddesses remember one thing the Bible warns us that Satan is called the God of this world. But he is not our God. For we serve the Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ, the Almighty. Remember, these are ingredients that would be normal to consume whether it's an apricot or some almond butter, but when they are mixed and satanically consecrated and put aside for an evil will with the intent of a spell in sorcery and alchemy and witchcraft, it changes everything. The roots on this wicked tree run deeper than we thought. So guess, guess what I did? Mm -hmm. I went through uh, tons of videos where they promote this midwives brew. And it was basically the same ingredients. I copied and pasted the midwives brew ingredients and I put it into the search bar. But instead of midwives brew, I replaced it with witch's brew and the exact same potion with the exact same ingredients popped up. Mm -hmm. That's surprised. how diabolical <laughs> this is. Yeah. <laughs> Have you ever heard of a womb priestess? Or how about a womb shaman? More than likely, you haven't. That's because they stay under the occult radar masquerading as midwives these are the ones that seem very sweet their hands seem very gentle they offer help and they test the waters on how far they can go and how much of the occult they can introduce to their prey just as the children of God are seeking out the lost to bring them to Yeshua the Messiah. So are the children of Babylon seeking out blinded people and lukewarm Christians to turn them over to the occult. So they will slowly introduce things like meditation. They will offer prayer and blessings and healings even using titles like God. But they are not talking about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But because so many Christians are lukewarm and cannot discern, they automatically assume it's right. And as they are wrapping themselves around their victim, they start to bring them deeper and deeper into the occult under the guise of I just want to be a helpful midwife. And as their victims allow them to lay hands on them, bless them, and they start to feel that strange fire but cannot discern the difference, they have opened the door of trust. And then they start to introduce yoga, hypnobirthing, 
Reiki. They'll supply oils and herbs. And as the victim thinks they're just being a helpful person, they're operating curses and spells. And the list goes on and on. I am a stay-at-home mom and part-time massage therapist. I met Selke four years ago. Uh, she gave me a Reiki session. Uh, it was a really, it was different. I've had Reiki sessions before. There was a depth to it that I had never experienced. Uh, then I later started taking Reiki classes with her and I had also taken Reiki classes before and it was the same thing. There was a depth to it. It was so much more informative than I had ever experienced and so layered and healing. Uh, it covered every aspect of a healing session, not just energetically, but what could be going on emotionally, what could be going on physically, mentally. It gave me an awareness of myself and others that I didn't have before. Silke was a huge part of my birth, of my birth plan, of my pregnancy. I received Reiki sessions while I was pregnant and I could feel how it helped my body and I felt how my daughter, um, I didn't know I had a daughter yet, my baby, was really enjoying energy work. And then the day came, I went into labor and Silke was part of my labor and I was given Reiki during labor and my pain would just subside. It was amazing, my, I had back labor, it, it was painful and she just helped me so much. Again, with um, all of her knowledge in one, she didn't just come and give me Reiki, she spoke kindly to me, she spoke to my heart. Um, I felt stronger in the moment for it. She used herbal tea, essential oils, and all of that made my birth and my labor so much easier. She used herbal tea, essential oils, and all of that made my birth and my labor so much easier. I, I do respect your time. I just have a couple more questions, right? So, yeah, go ahead. Um, the, the the other one was, okay, we know, first off, in, 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 to me this is common knowledge, right? If God breaks a mother's, um, the, the sack, what's it called there, the uh, placenta, is it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say it like this. If, if when God allows a woman's water to break, in that moment, God is saying, I no longer want my child in water. It's time for my child that I created, right? Because we're all the children of God, right? We are created in his image. So when God, break, when God declares when a mother's water breaks, at that moment, God is declaring that the child needs to be in land. That child needs to breathe air. We're not water creatures. Have you ever stopped and thought about the significance of water baptism? All through the word of God, we see the importance of water when it comes to the gospel. The following part of this documentary is very shocking and we're about to go to a whole nother level of exposing the occult agenda of water birthing in the midwife industry. If you don't know what that is, it is exactly what the name says. It is when a pregnant woman deliberately gives birth in an oversized tub of water. Now if one does not have the knowledge and the understanding, this would seem harmless or even beneficial that it may soothe the woman as she's giving birth. But the reality is, there is a deep-rooted occult agenda that Satan does not want you to know about. But the Word of God commands us to expose the devil 
anywhere we can. That is why we are trying to put out as many different types of documentaries and videos, not only teaching you the mysteries of Christ, but also exposing Satan in the many places that he hides. From the beginning, my wife and I have always been opposed and against water birthing, but I could never put my finger on why my spirit man was against it. But as I was meditating and doing this documentary, the Lord took me on a journey. What you're about to learn is very shocking and disturbing. Now before we continue with the recording of the phone interview with our sister who spent over 15 years in the occult before Jesus Christ set her free, I want to go over a few points before we continue before we play the phone recording number one deliberate water birthing is not natural when the Lord breaks the water and a woman goes into labor it is at that moment that Christ wants that child to be brought into this world not into the marine kingdom but on land to breathe air Think of the spirit of confusion that comes upon a baby when they leave their mother's womb and immediately are into a strange bath of water. One thing that's not talked about, but it is a fact, is during labor. There is a mixture of blood and even feces that mixes up in the pool of water the woman is sitting in. I want you to think about that. What if this is a diabolical plan as a mockery of a baptism into the occult? If you know anything about Satanism and witchcraft, the more grotesque and nasty things people do for Satan, the more they show their allegiance. Sadly, this involves blood and feces and ritualistic acts. The first thing that precious baby experiences is a pool of bloody, filthy water. Now please keep in mind, I don't want you to focus on the dirty water in the physical realm because the baby's not clean. Because let's face it, no baby is clean coming out of the womb of its mother. There's always going to be fluids and things like that. But you have to see that in the spiritual realm, this is demonic. The child is entering through a dirty water portal. This is a ritual. Do not focus on the physical as gross as it is. Because let's face it, it isn't going to be the same as natural birth on land. The mixing of the feces in the water and these things are part of the ritual. And sadly, people don't realize this. This is a spiritual agenda, you understand, to dedicate that child to the marine kingdom and also to an ancient Egyptian goddess that we will talk about later in the video. But it doesn't stop there. There is a diabolical plan to put a spirit in that baby through a ritual that goes back to the pharaohs. We will get into that in a moment. I also want you to understand that people perish because of a lack of knowledge and because the baby is ordained to go from the womb to air and the earth. Instead, because it goes through dirty water, it brings a spirit of confusion from birth. So I will now continue the phone recording of the interview with an ex-witch who spent over 15 years studying the occult and thank God he delivered her. My question is, are you delivered? Have you been set free? I want you to know that even if you perform these rituals willfully, the Lord can set you free. His blood is so powerful, he can cleanse you and your precious children. But you have to humble yourself and do the prayer with me at the end of this video. With that being said, let us begin. So 
even in a regular realm, not even just looking at it in the spiritual realm, it brings a, if you look at it, it brings a spirit of confusion because that baby goes from the womb into water, right? And it's right. supposed to go from the womb out of the water of the womb and into what, you know, land, you could say air, right? So even that right. brings a spirit of confusion and error upon the child. So doing my research, I found out that water birthing was a ritual specifically for pharaohs when they're born. Do you, mm -hmm. are you a, in agreement with that? Is that true? Yeah, I would agree with that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so from your studies, that is true. Wow. That so is, it just yeah, lets you know. Piece of information, yes. Now, here's the interesting thing. The connection is in the Bible. It was the pharaoh that had a direct connection to the midwives. He was commanding them to kill the Hebrew uh, male children, the babies, right? It just mm -hmm. lets you know that pharaoh connection, right? So I wanted to stop and talk to you before we continue with this phone interview. You must understand the significance of what is being exposed. Do you have any idea how important Egyptology is to Mystery Babylon? To those in the occult, it always goes back to the all-seeing eye in the pyramid. Now, depending on their rank, some will represent the pyramid but they hide it in plain sight while others while others are bold in your face with it i mean after all it is on the dollar bill but when it comes to egypt and the worshiping of the egyptian false gods to them they believe you have to understand how much of a role this plays in this last hour with Mystery Babylon. Did you know that in the New Testament, Egypt is considered a spirit that is moving across the earth? So you have to understand the significance of this water birthing being connected to the pharaohs. I truly believe there is such an agenda here that when a child is born through this ritual, there is a spirit of Egypt that is attached to that child through the water birthing Pharaoh ritual. Now, thank God the blood of the lamb can wash us and that the name above every name can break any curse off of you or your children. Anything that you got involved with whether knowing or unknowing, if you repent and get washed in the blood of the Lamb, the Lord can break every curse off of you. The light of Jesus Christ always overcomes the kingdom of darkness. I needed to take this time and really show you the significance of Egyptology in the end days. You see the sun worship and the all-seeing eye and the pyramids and all of these things. And that's not including symbols that you just don't recognize. Like the sun disk with the wings. There's so many that companies and corporations represent and even have logos that go back to ancient Egypt worship. But you just... But most don't understand because they don't recognize it. This is that lesser magic of promoting. This is that lesser magic of showing the people without telling the people. You understand? But what if I told you, as I was meditating on this, the Lord took me back to the days of Moses. What if... The reason why God allowed Moses to be sent down the river in the basket is because this was the way it would guarantee an open door for Moses to be accepted into the family of the Pharaoh 
because they drew him from the water. You see? That's what his name means. That he was not born in water, but those in Egypt that understood this principle of Pharaoh's being birthed in water would have held Moses to a very deep spiritual significance being that he was discovered in water. They would have lifted him. They would have looked at him as a very unique and special child. Now, I don't know about you, but it adds up to me. I mean, think about the significance that Pharaoh would have a connection to the midwives in the book of Exodus. Do you think that is a coincidence? I don't. Could it be that these witches that are masquerading as midwives are obeying Pharaoh in the spirit by promoting water birthing and other ancient Egyptian practices? They are actually following the orders and commands of Pharaoh in the spirit. After all, the New Testament warns us of the spirit of Egypt. What we're going to do is continue in this video and we're going to see if there's any more Egyptian connections to these false gods and goddesses. I think what I would add is, um, especially for, well, I would say bats, just like you mentioned how Brews are a um, an occult uh, an, a word associated with the occult, right? Everything that that you would make yeah. a tea, you know, um, or anything like that that consists of steeping herbs in water uh, and using them for a magical purpose that is a brew. Um, baths are also very common, you know, very like important in practice. People use baths for for cleansing for all types of things right um you had mentioned earlier like sacks of herbs being put in the water um and that's because uh they would believe like the properties of those herbs the magical properties of those herbs would transfer to the water and then therefore you bathe in that and for whatever purpose it was you know um it covers you so Bathing in water, bathing in milk, bathing in blood, they all have different, you know, purposes. Um, yes, covering, like covering yourself completely, I think is more of like marking yourself for a certain purpose, you know? Well, the reason I brought that up is because to me, even biblically, the Bible commands us to abstain from blood. And there's other scriptures. Mm -hmm. Now, we know there are natural things, like when a woman goes through that time of the month and, you know, it's collected on a, a rag back in those days or a pad nowadays. But for a woman to stay in a bath with blood and feces and all types of fluids and, and, and just sit there with the baby, and a lot of times, and I, there's a video that I have where these midwives, they literally, listen to this now, they dump a potion, like a mixture of brew, into the blood water. And then they mm -hmm. took the placenta and did a bunch of like circles. They moved the placenta around in the bath water. Mm -mm. Could you imagine? That's another thing that they use placentas. Um uh, well, it'll use for senses. Have you ever heard of like um, eating it? Like so they would have either some um, women or men or whatever they do with the placenta. People would eat it. They say, oh, because it has lots of nutrients, but um, it's also part of ritual or planting it. Um, like I like have a marker in the ground. It's an abomination. Like that. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm not surprised that they would be, they would use the placenta, um, you know, in whatever they were doing in the water. Um, it's kind of gross. <laughs> Sorry. If, <laughs> I, if I, I could add something, the bag. I, I know, if I could just add something <laughs> for those listening, never let them take 
a placenta. If if they ask you, well, do you want us to dispose of this? Do not give it to those midwives. And and when they eat that placenta, that is cannibalism, mm-hmm. and that is an abomination in the eyes of the Lord. So uh, these things I'm trying to quickly uh, just go through because I, I respect your time. So um, the the next thing that I wanted to bring uh, to your attention, the next question I have for you, okay, so when I was doing my research on water uh, birthing, I noticed you earlier you had mentioned how there's a lot of um, false gods when it comes to, uh, you know, water and pregnancy and birthing. It mm-hmm. very uh, there, there's actually one uh, from this region in the Aztec religion, and it's spelled T L A L O O C, and mm-hmm. basically um, this false god is also a god of fertility and water. Mm-hmm. And when I read that, I was like, what? And it connects back to the water birthing, but then it, it went deeper because. In Egyptology, right, there is a false god, a goddess in Egyptology called Taweret. And mm-hmm. literally this false god, huh? Uh, the hippo goddess that you mentioned earlier? That's right. yes, okay. yes, the hippo goddess. That's right. And she's literally in charge of giving birth, right? She's in charge of babies and and I'm like, okay. So I do some research and I found pictures of this idol. They placed it literally in a bathtub of water, in a bath of water. And I'm just like, mm-hmm. wait a minute. So what would be the odds that that was an ancient pharaoh tradition, right, for them to birth in the water? And then you have this other Egyptian goddess, false god, but just for the sake of the the, the video, Right. She would stand in the water and receive the children. And just when you thought it couldn't go deeper, you're realizing the roots of this old wicked Babylonian tree have been growing for a long time. Once again, I had to stop and emphasize on how blessed you are to be revealed this knowledge remember that god reveals things that are hidden to his servants and i am a servant of the most high god and i know it seems like information overload but you have to understand that i have a passion when it comes to warning the saints of god about what goes on under the radar what would be the odds that Egyptology, that spirit of Egypt, would be so prominent in the last days with Mystery Babylon? And it just so happens to be that in the occult, this false goddess, Taweret, is the Egyptian goddess of childbirth and fertility. She's also known as the lady of the birth house. Mind you, she represents the hippopotamus, which gives birth in the water. I found it interesting in the cartoon we played earlier in the video. As Moses was going down the Nile, there you see the subliminal message of Taweret not able to consume Moses. The article goes on to say, much like Taweret, whose name is formed, is as a dress intended to calm the ferocity of the goddess. Ipet's name, the nurse, demonstrates her connection to birth and child rearing and general caretaking. There are many pictures and images of this false goddess, Taweret, the Egyptian goddess of fertility, maternity, and childbirth. 
There's even pictures of her depicted as a nurse. But what was shocking is when I came across this picture of a statue of Towerette in a bath of water. Over and over again, you see the connection between the Towerette and water birth. What would be the odds that there would be a company called Towerette Midwifery? Do you still think this is a coincidence? Just let it be known, those in the occult take this very serious. It was interesting that I came across a YouTube video about spiritual midwives and the first image that comes on the screen. Although they say gospel group, God's recycled, notice the Egyptian symbolism because many midwives masquerade as Christians but it's a guise to hide their true identity. Notice they put the baby on top of the idol, Towerette. What do you think they're saying in the spirit realm? So brothers and sisters, now do you see why I took the time, hours, to get this documentary into your hands and why we have started this new series and release other videos exposing the places which is hide. This is not a game, brothers and sisters. The occult is very real. Even as Jannies and Jambres withstood Moses, even so do these stand against you, the Bible says. Remember the sorcerers in the book of Acts that the sons of God went to war against. This is a real spiritual warfare. You have to stop being ignorant of the devil's devices. Start being more discerning and get closer to Christ and the Holy Spirit will lead and guide you into all truth. So to sum it all up as we continue in this phone interview, I truly believe that Egyptology is the main agenda with the occult promoting water birth that as as the spirit of pharaoh is already upon the child this false goddess and demon towerette stands there in the spiritual realm waiting to receive that child coming out of the water and because of ignorance the mother and father offer up their child to the demon gods of egypt do you remember on the last documentary how we showed you the lesser magic connection between the book called Moonshot, the abomination, and all the connections to the moon coming out in the industry? Do you remember when I showed you Disney has, has just released a movie called The Moon Knight? What would be the odds that this false goddess Towerette would actually be in this movie. And the first place that she appears is in a hospital. And this is that connection to a nurse and a midwife and also I believe the abomination. Remember that Mystery Babylon, when it comes to the occult of Egyptology and the worship of gods and goddesses which are truly just demons and fallen angels Egypt is if not the most important to mystery Babylon but what would be the odds of the Towerette being revealed in a movie at a time when we're exposing the enemy mind you brothers and sisters I have been slowly working on this documentary before the Moon Knight video even released. This is once again confirmation that we truly are exposing the enemy with the light of Christ. And what's crazy is that in this movie, Towerette is able to go into bodies and use them as an avatar. As I've warned you and will continue to do so, this water birthing ritual 
causes the child to take upon a spirit of Egypt. And the false goddess Tawaret, as the nurse and midwife, is there to receive the child and dedicate that precious baby to the occult. And be in charge of that department, in charge of women giving birth. And it, it just, it, it's all connecting now on why water birthing, especially since the last two years with everything that's been going on, as you know, the lie going around, making people afraid, and they're all staying home. They literally have said that um, midwives, and it's gone up a whole lot. A lot of, a lot of women are choosing to give birth outside yeah. of the hospital, you know. So all of these connections... Uh, it, it's just pretty evident that there is something diabolical that Satan is doing because he's, the Bible calls him the God of this world, and he wants his hands in any place that he can in this world. He wants to, you know, uh, be in charge. So I really appreciate your time. And, you know, looking at all of this, mm -hmm. it, it's been very shocking. You know, as I was going through multiple videos of women giving birth in tubs, uh, giving birth in water, there was even a man who proclaims to be a pastor, and he actually testifies that he used to be in the New Age, right? Mm -hmm. So as I'm watching this video of his wife giving birth in water, right, as she's in the tub holding the, the child, there's floating uh, bags of herbs in the water, and her children have these seashells in their hands yeah. while they're what is that that that's weird to me so the the first thing that comes to my mind um first of all me having the same background or I, I wouldn't say maybe the same i don't know the depth of his um education in the occult um but me having a, uh, a similar background I would not be comfortable having bags of herbs prepared and put in a bath, especially if I had, you know, converted, you know what I'm saying? If I no longer practice the occult, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to be near any of those things. But that being said, the first thing that comes to my mind, um, I know that you have mentioned her before in an old video that you made. One of the um, false goddesses in Santeria, which translates to a lot of different false goddesses in other religions, um, Yamaya, which is the false goddess of the ocean, you mentioned her as Mamawata in one of your videos. And her representations are seashells, and she is a mother. She takes That's care crazy. of children. And her sister, Oshun, who is the false goddess of like love or whatever that could be associated with like Aphrodite, um, gives her children over because she knows that Yemen has a better mother. She watches over that, um, so, you know, in, in, in that practice. Not that it's true, um, not that it's real, but in that practice, that's what they believe. So have them being holding shells, you know, um, and having those, herbs or mojo bags in the water um i don't i don't see the purpose other than something like that to have like a a spirit watch over the birth watch over the mother watch over the baby um i know in hispanic practices when they do things like that especially like at birth or even when someone is entering a practice you know later in their adulthood they go through a whole rebirthing cycle and then they have what's called an asiento, which is when they kind of seat on on you a mother, like a, a mother or father spirit to watch over you, you know? So when I hear you that's say that crazy. he had those things happen during the birth, that's what comes to my mind. There's no other and, reason. And like, why are they holding seashells? Like, what is this? Did we just go to the beach? Like, I don't... There's no point in that. It, exactly. And, and to top it off, his wife actually is from 
the islands. She's it's either Trinidad yeah. or one of those. So would that bring in even more of a connection? Yeah. So I bet you that it's it's probably that. Now on top of that, I didn't even know about that one because of course all of this is 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 definitely a part of the marine kingdom, right? But there's also mm -hmm. a false goddess by the name of Venus, and yeah. She also well, Venus is, is Aphrodite, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. that's Aphrodite. Okay, so the same seashells. Yeah, and and do you know it's the same exact seashells that she's standing in the image of her is the one the children yeah, and the have? Photoshop, yeah, I'm sorry. Wow. Well, I, I mean, the, the thing about it is this is a man who's actually very wicked. He's not a true man of God at all. And the fact that he boasts about being from the occult, there's absolutely no way he could be like, oh, I didn't know. It has to be deliberate, they just like how yeah. he slanders. Huh? Yeah, there's no way. I, no, I, I agree with you. There's no way because there's so many things that I see every day um, or, you know, like let's say I, I go to the store and I'm like, ooh, you know, that, that thing looks kind of nice, whatever, for my house. And I'm like, oh, but... I know what the symbol is, you know, or I know what this, I, if I know, knowing what these things represent, like, I can't bring that into my home. So if he, if he, unless he dabbled and it was just like here and there and really didn't educate himself, if he's claiming that he was deep into the occult, um, has a lot of knowledge, if he's claiming that he was on any kind of rank, then he knows exactly what he's doing. Long story short, I studied the occult and learn how to leave my body. I was meeting with famous spiritualists and teachers and learning New Age doctrines. He's claiming that he was deep into the occult, um, has a lot of knowledge. He's claiming that he was on any kind of rank, then he knows exactly what he's doing. About astral projection. And he was speaking a lot of truth and things that I believed about astral projection because I was into the new age. If he's claiming that he was deep into the occult, um, has a lot of knowledge, if he's claiming that he was on any kind of rank, then he knows exactly what he's doing. So let's get this straight. A man and woman who claim to have a ministry and extensive knowledge of the occult just so happened to choose a marine kingdom theme to give birth to their child and then on top of that they choose water birth then on top of that they involve herbs into the ritual and then on top of that they give their children seashells to offer up to the new child and the mother you do know that Venus was born in water in the very seashell they gave their children to offer to the baby is the shell that she's standing on. And you do know that in Venus mythology it says visitors also offered to honor Venus through their work or through specific acts of ritual worship. And children often would offer artwork to the goddess. They would also give Venus seashells and toys and jewelry. And the list goes on. Now remember, this is a series called The Places Witches Hide. And as much as it's important to expose the occult under the radar in the world, how much more important is it? That we also expose the Simon the Sorcerers masquerading as Christians in the midst of the body of Christ. But let's give this man and woman the benefit of the doubt. Let's say it was all coincidence. I think the only way we would be able to come to a godly conclusion is to study the tree and fruit of this man. What I'm going to do 
is play a small compilation of video clips exposing this man's character. But before you watch this compilation, let us go over the character of a witch one more time. We know that a witch operates out of manipulation, intimidation, and domination. Now, how do you think a witch would operate if they came into Christianity the same way witches enter into the midwife industry with the agenda to curse others, to dominate over others, and to lead people away from God and into mystery Babylon? Would not this same theory apply to those who enter into Christianity, but secretly they're in the occult? And just like the character of the midwife witches, would they not pretend and offer to help people, to bless people, to pray for people, and even use the title God to deceive the feeble-minded? What do you think the main agenda of a sorcerer, a witch, and those in the occult entering into Christianity, what do you think their main agenda would be? I believe it would be to turn people away from the true and living God, to cause as many as possible to deny Jesus Christ as the Lord God. Even Christ himself said, if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. After all, denying God as God is blasphemy. To tell the Lord God Almighty that he is not the Lord God Almighty is utter blasphemy. So when I meditate on what the agenda of a witch masquerading as a pastor would be, it would be to get as many people to deny Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit as the Lord God Almighty. It would be to sow discord among the brethren. It would be to cause chaos and confusion, mock, slander, and lie about others. To misrepresent the gospel. To mock that which is holy and corrupt the minds of young believers. This is what I believe is fruit that we should look for. If we are going to expose witches the places which is hide in the midst of Christianity. With that being said, I will play this compilation and leave the choice up to you on whether this man and woman just so happened to have coincidence after coincidence or could it possibly be that he really is a practitioner of the occult and a witch in disguise masquerading as a teacher of the Bible. After all, even the Freemasons deny Jesus as the Lord God. Even the Freemasons involve the Bible in some of their rituals. Even those in the occult involve the Bible in some of their rituals. So I pray that you will have discernment and judge righteously and ask yourself the question, based upon the fruit of this man, is he a witch or is the birthing video you just watched all a simple coincidence? He's the only begotten Son of the Most High God. He is God by given authority from the Father, but He is not the Most High God. He is not the Most High God. Because this says he's you three or one. Listen, you could keep talking about mumbo jumbo and bringing up stupid stuff all you want. Well, you don't even know what the Trinity stuff. is. Okay. Uh, scripture is stupid. Stuff, I see. Well, because this says he's you three or one. Listen. You could keep talking about mumbo jumbo and bringing up stupid stuff all you want. Well, you don't even know what the Trinity is. Okay. Well, scripture is stupid. Stuff, I see. Well, I see. Well, and you don't believe that Jesus made himself equal with God. No, I don't believe he literally ever made himself equal with God. There's a verse in the Bible that says he thought it not robbery to be equal with God, that somebody else said about him, 
that somebody else said about him, that somebody else said about him, that somebody else said about him, you show me where Jesus said, no, I am not God. No, I don't need to show you that. He because corrected he didn't say to... that. He no, did he, not he did deny one... being God, and you're saying he did. You got to twist it. No, he, he did not he did deny one... being God, and you're saying he did. You got to twist it. He denied being God. Yes, he denied being God. Where? Absolutely. Okay, are you going to deny that Jesus is the everlasting Father? Yes, Jesus is not the Father. Well, the scripture just said that his name is the everlasting Father and the mighty God. Calls if Abraham Father too. So you don't believe that? Uh, you don't believe that Jesus me? you don't believe that Jesus is the everlasting Father? No, no, you I don't. don't. That Jesus is the mighty God. No, he's the Son. No, you don't believe Isaiah nine six. And Jesus is equal to the Father. No, he's not. He said the Father is greater. No, he's, he's not himself equal. equal to well, this makes him equal with the Father. No, he's not equal to the Father. I don't care what that makes him because, like, no, he's not equal to the Father. I don't care what that makes him. No, he's not equal to the Father. I don't care what that makes him because, because I care what he said. He said the Father is greater than I. Yeah. So explain that. How? How is he the everlasting Father? He's the Father of many nations. Oh, That's he's the Father of. It doesn't mean he's the everlasting Father. It doesn't say. He's the father of many nations. It says he's the everlasting father. Yes or no? What's that? Is the doctrine of the Trinity the official, not my doctrine, the official doctrine of the Trinity that the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are co-equal? Yes or no? Yeah. Well, I can tell you what the scripture says. I don't want the scripture. The doctrine. No, you don't want the scripture. Well, the scripture is what I believe, unfortunately, for you, dude. Well, I can tell you what the scripture says. I don't what the scripture? Well, the scripture is what I believe, unfortunately, for you, dude. Listen to me, you idiot! The yeah, doctor. Uh, boy, your your head's gonna explode. Cause you're getting funny now, dude. We believe the Father has given Jesus Christ the Holy Spirit without measure, to carry out his purpose. Note, the Holy Spirit is never called God the Holy Spirit in Scripture. This is an unbiblical way to refer to the Holy Spirit. It should only be called the Spirit of God, or the Holy Spirit, or the Comforter, or the Spirit of Truth, like that. It should never be called God the Holy Spirit. Yeah. It should never be called God the Holy Spirit. Are you going to answer my question or not? Is, is the Holy Spirit God? No, the Holy Spirit's the Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit is not God. I'm, I'm proving it to you because it's only called the Spirit of God. It's not called God. It is. There is a being called the Holy Spirit. Tell, tell me where it's called God right now. There is a being. Uh, so you're saying the Holy Spirit is not God? No, it's the, it's not it's not called God in the Bible. It's called the Spirit of God. That's what it's called in the Bible. Are you saying the Holy Spirit? You just said the Holy Spirit is not God. All, all you, even if he's a blood bought, washed in the blood, whatever stupid figurative phrases that people use, Number one, no one's washed in the blood. I don't remember last time I took a blood bath. I don't remember the last time I was uh, covered and slathered in the blood of Jesus. I'm baptized in the Holy Spirit. The blood of Jesus bought the Holy Spirit for me. It didn't buy my sins, but... How you doing? This video is going to be about the new background. This was kind of my plan the whole time. This design does have a meaning to me and I'm going to explain it to you. It, it comes from a conversation I had one time with a demon. Actually with more than one demon. 
a conversation I had one time with a demon, actually with more than one demon. A conversation I had one time with a demon, actually with more than one demon. A conversation I had one time with a demon, actually with more than one demon. About how demons view us, how they see us when they see us in the spirit realm. A demon explained to me once that their vision doesn't work like our vision. The way the demon described it is it's like a honeycomb, like a beehive honeycomb. Now, the demon described to me when they look at us, they see us as light and darkness. So when they look at us, what they'll look for is how many of their angels are in there and how much light of God is in there. And when it gets to a certain point, like when they're, when they're looking at us and there's more darkness than light. Now what a demon explained to me is, when they look at this honeycomb, when they look at us, they see this honeycomb. That's how their eye sockets work or their vision or that's how God allows them to view us. Like I said in other videos, they have a hive mind. They're hooked into a principality. Um, that's why this design is back there. And that's the idea behind this. Now, of course, guys, this is an e extra biblical perspective. Everything you do doesn't have to be of the Bible. Everything you do has to bear good fruit of God, though. When I look at my eyes in many videos, I see a demon looking back at me. How what, the way you look at other people and the way they look at you and the way you think about the way you look at other people and the way they look at you, you need to make sure that there's not pride in those thoughts. This is how I view myself, guys. This is, I view myself of all light and darkness. And where Satan is manipulating my personality and where Satan is manipulating my personality and where and where Satan is manipulating my personality 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 I hope you like the design Your the back memory, stifles out while well, you're good too. The memory of you grabbing me and tossing me in the dirt and slapping at me, trying to strangle my throat at the door of our own home. Never strangled you, never slapped our children you. and squeeze <coughs> my face. And the expression on your face that as you did. did it makes my memory. That was intentional. I tried to forget it and I'm asking God to help me forget it so that I can be confident and fun and loving and caring and normal again so that I can feel like a loved woman again. I'm gonna pray to God about how did you get Shut up! Here. You should be very Shut scared. your mouth! I have never hit my wife once in my entire life. Not once. ...in my face when I got up, and then he started all over again, and he was slapping at me. I know it because I was, being, I was the one being slapped, okay? I know it because I was the one feeling it. How many days he do I got He came strapped me, choking, choking my neck. I had neck pain for days. Days. I have never hit my wife once in my entire life. Not once. It was around then I noticed that people could be controlled if they feared you. She is going to do whatever I ask or I'm sending her back to Trinidad. She is going to do whatever I ask or I'm sending her back to Trinidad. She is going to do whatever I ask or I'm sending her back to Trinidad. Like that? And I went under the video and I said, Thank you. You are correct, sir. <laughs> I am a bully among Christians. <laughs> I am a bully among Christians. Was he a bully? 
Jesus Christ was a bully. Was he a bully? Jesus Christ was a bully. Was he a bully? Jesus Christ was a bully. Was he a bully? Jesus Christ was a bully. The places witches hide. So what do you think, brothers and sisters? Was this a man? Did you feel the love of God watching his videos? Did you see the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Or did you see a witch operating as a Christian teacher online? Remember, you will always know a tree by its fruit. And believe me, we have only scratched the surface of the amount of blasphemy and heresy that has come out of this man's forked-tongued mouth. And we have only scratched the surface exposing the hidden occultism that he has been operating in, in plain sight. But the reality is, and sadly, he's a reprobate because he has blasphemed the Holy Spirit by openly denying him as Lord God Almighty, speaking evil of things he doesn't understand. He has sealed his own fate, but pray for his children and pray for those who follow not only him, but many that are blinded following the Simon the Sorcerers masquerading as biblical teachers online. If we're going to expose the places which is hide, we need to start in the house of God. This is how the Galatians were deceived because they weren't paying attention. But with that being said, let us go ahead and recap and meditate on all the things that were exposed and revealed to you. And my hope is that your understanding has been opened and you'll be more cautious and aware of your surroundings, not as a paranoid person, but rather a discerner and prudent not as a false accuser, but rather someone who studies the fruit of every tree that walks into their life. As we righteously did with this blaspheming, witchcraft working heretic. And there's tens of thousands just like him online. Now for any of you that were involved in the occult, one way or the other, I want you to do this short and simple prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, please forgive me of all sins and wash me in your holy blood, mind, body, soul, and spirit. Cleanse my mind, O oh God. Lord Jesus Christ, if I've ever been involved with anything of the occult, whether it's witchcraft or the new age, Satanism, Wicca, Paganism, anything of the kingdom of Satan, I repent of it, I renounce it and reject it. I also reject all of the occult that came from my mother or father and my entire bloodline. And if you have children, I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I pray over my children through your name and by the power of the Holy Spirit, you can break every curse off of my off of me and my entire household lord cover my children under your blood and cleanse them from any rituals that were ever done to them or me and my family lord jesus christ draw me to you increase my discernment to detect the snakes in the grass in the places that witches hide and try to sneak in under the radar Help me to read your word and understand it. Draw me deeper into your presence and fill me with the love of God. 
that I can pray for my enemies, those that still have a chance, that are not reprobate. I pray for all those in the occult that, Lord, you will save as many as possible, that they can repent and get saved just like you allowed me to get saved. I love you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord God, for what you have revealed in this documentary. Continue to expose the devil as you have commanded us to in your word. Help me, Lord, to obey you and walk the straight and narrow path. Make me, cause me to hate what you hate and love what you love. To fear you, honor you, and serve you all the days of my life. And Lord, I forgive all those that have hurt me. I forgive my enemies, O oh God. Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth, preserve me blameless in you. Protect me and my family and the, and the entire body of Christ from all the powers of darkness. Light us on fire and raise up your mighty army to declare the word of the Lord to be filled with the Holy Ghost and fire and to do your will in this last day, in this last hour. In Jesus Christ's name we pray, amen. Brothers and sisters, these videos take very long and we try to balance it out by uploading dinner table messages and videos that reveal mysteries about our glorious and mighty God Jesus Christ but in between we also have to expose the devil we are commanded to have this balance of shining the light and exposing the darkness so as we upload other videos by God's grace we'll continue to release this series the places which is hide in Jesus Christ's name we love you all so much Bless. The road ahead is so cold. You sure you want to take this walk with me? Speak the truth. You lose so many friends and even family. That's when you'll find out everything in this world is truly vanity. Somebody pinch me and tell me this has all been a dream. I try to wake up, but deep down I know it's not a dream. Please wake me and tell me this is nothing but.